Pythagoras theorem is famous, and this is the most famous way to show it. Given a right angled triangle, build squares on each side, and then the sum of the two smaller ones is equal to the bigger one. But what if I told you that you can have pentagons, hexagons or other polygons built instead of squares? Will the areas of these shapes still add up? Keep watching to learn about the most intuitive proof of the Pythagoras theorem. For polygons, perimeter is the sum of lengths of all of its sides. Perimeter is a linear function of side length, meaning that if you increase the sides by some factor, the perimeter is going to change by the same factor. Let's talk about areas now. For an equilateral triangle with side length a, the area is a squared root 3 over 4. For a square, the area is a squared. And for a regular hexagon, it becomes 3 root 3 a squared over 2. You see a pattern here? Each formula is a squared multiplied by some constant. This makes sense, right? Area should be related to the square of the side length. And volume will be proportional to the cube of side length. So it is obvious that areas of any regular polygons built on the sides of a right angled triangle will always add up like they do in classic Pythagoras. To me, this shows the essence behind this famous formula. If you now wonder how this can help us prove the theorem, here's what I suggest. Out of all possible polygons, let us pick right angle triangles. So here's my triangle, and out of all possible polygons, I want to use right angle triangles again. Here's how it works. We have two acute angles, ACB and ABC, and I want to build similar triangles to our initial triangle ABC. And here's how it works. I will simply reflect these angles. So I want to make these angles the same. So I draw this line and I construct a right angle triangle. So this is a right angle, uh, not very precise, but does the job. And then I reflect this angle as well so these angles become equal and I wait till I can draw a height so it becomes like this let's call this point 01 and this point 02 so I hope it is easy for you to realize that this triangle this triangle and our initial triangle are all similar because they have equal angles, they have the same angles. And now we want to prove the Pythagoras theorem using that addition of areas property that I talked about in the video. So we somehow should get that the sum of areas of this triangle and this triangle is equal to our big initial triangle, which we can imagine to be built on this basis, BC. So how can we demonstrate this area property? Well, I propose a very clever idea. Let us reflect these triangles inwards. What are we going to get? Well, if you think about it, you realize that you will get a height, you will get a perpendicular down here, and then these two triangles will be equal and then these two triangles will also be equal and you can see how they precisely add up to form our initial triangle so two similar triangles with their areas combined add up to another similar triangle. So here is why it proves Pythagoras for us. If 
we take AB to have length L, then AC has length, say, K times L, where K is more than 1, based on our picture. So now, if we denote the area of the smallest triangle, BO1A, as S, then the area of the next biggest triangle, AOC, will be K squared times S, because we are comparing areas. So sides were scaled linearly, and that means that areas will scale like a square function. So now you see the duality between areas and squares of sides. And it will not take long to prove Pythagoras from here, which I suggest you do yourself. And this is it.